Hi, I'm Star Parker, president of CURE, the Center for Urban Renewal and Education. Welcome to our class. The progressives keep telling us conservatives that a conservative worldview will not keep America moving forward and it hurts women. It won't work for women. They tell us that if conservatives would just act like liberals, then maybe, just maybe, young people and women people and black people and short people and maybe even a few illegal people will begin to like them. They say that if us conservatives would just get with the program, rap a little, smoke pot a little, take off your clothes and in front of total strangers a little. Oh, don't forget, give up your guns, give up your God, then maybe, just maybe, you might get somewhere. The national comedians will stop mocking you. The national news might just ignore you instead of try to destroy you. My goodness, the lie of the left. Oh, I bought that lie. Prior to my involvement in social activism, I lived the lie of the left, seven years in and out of welfare dependency until a Christian conversion. And the facts show us that the problem for America's future today is actually progressive feminism. It has caused marriage to collapse. And that is the collapse of marriage that is the number one reason government dependency has exploded. In 1980, 20 percent of Americans got more from government than they put in. Today, 60 percent of Americans get more from government than they put in. Now look, even though there are mountains of data pointing to the connection between religion and conjugal marriage, to civil order, to protection of your private property, and to your economic prosperity, the progressive liberals in their quest for power started three wars against our American culture 50 years ago, and today women are paying a great price. The first war they started, a war on religion. And this war weakened our public institutions and opened a door to a culture of corruption. My goodness, you can't even trust the IRS today. Well, why? They scrubbed our schools of all reference to God. In 1962, the Supreme Court struck down state-sponsored school prayer. In 1963, the court ruled that you can't even read the Bible or recite the Lord's Prayer in a public school. And they wonder why people are now homeschooling. Number two, the progressive declared a war on marriage and this weakened women and it opened the door to this culture. It's a new culture of meaninglessness. Shopping is everything. Abortion? Abortion has deeply hurt us. 56 million dead in 40 years should give us all great pause. Did you know that in 1960, 75% of American adults were married compared to only around 50% today? In the 60s, 45% of young adults between 18 and 24 were married compared to just 9% today. Now, though the feminists of the 60s thought it was great to burn their bras on their way out of the kitchen and into the workforce, they remained sexually active and promoted sexual promiscuity as a newfound freedom. And what has happened as a result? Well, by the 80s, when Ronald Reagan was president, 18% of births were outside of marriage. And what are they today? 43%. Yeah, that's right. 1.7 million in 2011 alone. Blacks, from 22% out of wedlock birth rates in the 60s to 72% today. Whites, from 3% in the 60s to 30% today. Now, there was no data on Hispanics in the 60s, but we have data today, 53% outside of marriage. In fact, a Gallup poll just recently said 71% of the respondents between 18 and 34 said that having a baby outside of marriage is morally acceptable. Now, you might think it's cool, but according to Ron Haskins of the Brookings Institution, in 2009, the poverty rate for children in homes with married parents was 11%. The poverty rate for children in homes headed by single mothers was 44.3%. We have to ask ourselves if this is a good idea. The third war that the progressives declared on American culture was this war on poverty. And it happened during the same time as this whole feminist movement. The war on poverty then weakened what was left of family and opened a door to this culture of entitlements. The great society has had great cost. In just 50 years, blacks went from 70% of children being raised by married parents to 70% being raised by single parent today. In just 50 years, Women went from the traditional family life of socializing men in marriage and raising their children into the next generation of responsible adults to today competitive workaholics amidst reckless men and their children left to develop in their worldview from a popular culture of relativism, materialism, and narcissism. Frankly, the facts show that modern feminism has increased poverty and out-of-control debt 
enslavement to government, and broken families is no formula for a great country. I believe that in order for us to get our American culture back on a track toward freedom and peace and prosperity, it is important that conservative principles are revisited. Americans, once again, need to be reminded that there are eternal truths and boundaries that should not be crossed. These boundaries, they were set in our Constitution by our founders so that our nation would be free. These boundaries that they themselves were forced to debate for 80-something years regarding slavery after our founding because freedom and the ideals of personal liberty conflicted with the very law of the very land that they themselves established. We're, we're just no longer a free country when politicians get to define truth. It's just nowhere in the Declaration. It's nowhere in the Constitution. It's nowhere in the Bible that politicians have a right to force free people to pay for the lifestyles and choices of other free people. Not their housing, not their health care, not their food, not their child care, not their retirement, their habits, and certainly not their sex life. No. Nope. Not their Viagra, not their condoms, not their birth control devices, and certainly not their abortions. I think it's time for us to have an honest discussion about the failures of feminism and the feminist movement of the 60s. It's time for us to aggressively promote conservative women who reached great heights in history while living traditional and biblical lives, lives of courage and boldness and quality decisions to advance the kingdom of God. Women, all types of women. How about Moses' mother who boldly trusted God to work out the details of her life? How about women like Deborah who dis whose decisiveness and unwavering trust in God as a judge resulted in a military victory for her people? Oh, we can go back in history and see women like Eunice, who with her mother Lois planted seeds of faith into her son Timothy, who then gave us incredible insight into the heart of God. And what about some more recent roles, role models, women, Harriet, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Harriet Tubman, uh, Corey Tim, boom, oh, Mother Teresa, my goodness, the list is on and on. And of course, women like the millions of stay-at-home moms who are all around the world who in the face of modern feminism find great purpose and meaning live in quiet lives, in quiet communities, to pass on both a future and a hope for the next generation.